Hey, how's it going? This is part 2 of Granite vs Quartz Heat Test. I'll be testing the effects of a curling iron, pot of boiling water, an empty cast iron pan, and a cast iron pan filled with smoking hot oil. If you haven't seen it yet, please subscribe and check out my first video where I tested granite with the same series of tests. Just like the granite in my first video, the quartz countertop is 3 quarter inch thick, which is a standard for most countertops and vanities. I let these three items sit for about 15 minutes to make sure most of the heat energy was transferred to the slab. The 200 degree curling iron had no effect on the slab. The surface was perfectly shiny, no cracks or discoloration. The large pot of boiling water didn't crack or discolor the slab. And the surface was also perfectly shiny which was a little surprising. I was expecting the surface to at least dull a little from the pot melting the plastic binder. The maximum temperature quartz can tolerate is between 150 and 400 degrees, depending on the manufacturer. But you'll see later in the video why I highly recommend that you don't put anything that hot on the slab. The 505 degree cast iron pan had the highest temperature of the three, and I thought the pan would at least leave a burn mark on the surface, and for sure leave a surface haze. But to my surprise, it didn't cause any damage. I initially thought there was a burn mark, but it was just soot from the bottom of the pan. I also thought there was a surface haze, but it was just the moisture from my rag. Quartz countertops are man-made, and depending on the manufacturer is composed of about 90 to 93% quartz and 7 to 10% plastic binder and pigments. So most of the manufacturers don't recommend placing hot items on its surface since the plastic will react to the heat. The final test is the 582 degree smoking hot pan of oil, which is as extreme as it'll get in a kitchen. This test is extremely dangerous. Ask me about my eyebrows if you want to know how I know. The oil is above its flash point and can spontaneously ignite as you'll see in my first video. I'm totally predicting a scorched and melted surface, but since the plastic binders are relatively flexible compared to the granite, there shouldn't be any cracking. Or maybe not. I was totally not expecting the slab to crack. I would have bet money that this wouldn't have happened. The crack goes through the entire thickness of the slab, even through the doubled up laminated edge. What's interesting about this crack is it's not a typical crack that would normally run across the entire slab, breaking it in half. This crack starts out widest at the edge and feathers itself down to nothing towards the center, which to me is typical of a thermal fracture from uneven heating. The temperature of the slab is around 220 degrees, less than the 400 degrees some manufacturers claim. I've made my own DIY countertops with long slabs of quartz and it's actually difficult to crack. I've transported it flat, which is a big no-no. I've kneeled on it, jumped on it, and nothing has happened to it up until this point. You can see that the surface has been scorched from the pan. So based on my tests, it seems that you'll need a combination of high heat and high mass to cause this kind of damage. You can see a faint circular burn that was directly under the pan. Thanks for watching, and if you're thinking about making your own DIY countertops, subscribe and check out how I made mine for a few hundred dollars using cheap tools like a circular saw and angle grinder. If the video was helpful, please click on the like button. It would help me tremendously. Mahalo!